Run of river hydroelectricity ROR or run of the river hydroelectricity is a type of hydroelectric generation plant whereby little or no water storage is provided. Run of the river power plants may have no water storage at all or a limited amount of storage, in which case the storage reservoir is referred to as pondage. A plant without pondage is subject to seasonal river flows, thus the plant will operate as an intermittent energy source. Conventional hydro uses reservoirs, which regulate water for flood control and dispatchable electrical power. Concept Run of the river or ROR hydroelectricity is considered ideal for streams or rivers that can sustain a minimum flow or those regulated by a lake or reservoir upstream. A small dam is usually built to create a headpond ensuring that there is enough water entering the penstock pipes that lead to the turbines which are at a lower elevation. Projects with pondage, as opposed to those without pondage, can store water for daily load demands. In general, projects divert some or most of a river's flow up to 95% of mean annual discharge through a pipe and or tunnel leading to electricity generating turbines, then return the water back to the river downstream. ROR projects are dramatically different in design and appearance from conventional hydroelectric projects. Traditional hydro dams store enormous quantities of water in reservoirs, sometimes flooding large tracts of land. In contrast, run-of-river projects do not have the disadvantages associated with reservoirs, which is why they have less environmental impact. The use of the term, run-of-the-river, for power projects varies around the world. Some may consider a project ROR if power is produced with no water storage while limited storage is considered ROR by others. Developers may mislabel a project ROR to soothe public perception about its environmental or social effects. The Bureau of Indian Standards describes run of the river hydroelectricity as a power station utilizing the run of the river flows for generation of power with sufficient pondage for supplying water for meeting diurnal or weekly fluctuations of demand. In such stations, the normal course of the river is not materially altered. Many of the larger ROR projects have been designed to a scale and generating capacity rivaling some traditional hydro dams. For example, the Boharnwa Hydroelectric Generating Station in Quebec is rated at 1,853 MW. Some run-of-the-river projects are downstream of other dams and reservoirs. The run of the river project didn't build the reservoir, but does take advantage of the water supplied by it. An example would be the 1995 1436 megawatts La Grande 1 generating station. Previous upstream dams and reservoirs are part of the 1980s James Bay project. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Advantages. When developed with care to footprint size and location, ROR hydro projects can create sustainable energy minimizing impacts to the surrounding environment and nearby communities. Advantages include topic. Cleaner power, fewer greenhouse gases Like all hydroelectric power, run-of-the-river hydro harnesses the natural potential energy of water, eliminating the need to burn coal or natural gas to generate the electricity needed by consumers and industry. Moreover, run-of-the-river hydroelectric plants do not have reservoirs thus eliminating the methane and carbon dioxide emissions caused by the decomposition of organic matter in the reservoir of a conventional hydroelectric dam. This is a particular advantage in tropical countries where methane generation can be a problem. Less flooding, reservoirs Without a reservoir, flooding of the upper part of the river does not take place. 
As a result, people remain living at or near the river and existing habitats are not flooded. Any pre-existing pattern of flooding will continue unaltered, presenting a flood risk to the facility and downstream areas. Disadvantages Unfirm power Run of the river power is considered an unfirm source of power. A run of the river project has little or no capacity for energy storage and hence can't coordinate the output of electricity generation to match consumer demand. It thus generates much more power during times when seasonal river flows are high i.e., spring freshet, and depending on location, much less during drier summer months or frozen winter months. <laughs> <laughs> Availability of sites The potential power at a site is a result of the head and flow of water. By damming a river, the head is available to generate power at the face of the dam. Where a dam may create a reservoir hundreds of kilometers long, in run of the river the head is usually delivered by a canal, pipe or tunnel constructed upstream of the power house. Due to the cost of upstream construction, a steep drop is desirable, such as falls or rapids. Environmental impacts Small, well-sited ROR projects can be developed with minimal environmental impacts. Larger projects have more environmental concerns. In the case of fish-bearing rivers a ladder may be required and dissolved gases downstream may affect fish. In British Columbia the mountainous terrain and wealth of big rivers have made it a global testing ground for 10 to 50 MW run of river technology. As of March 2010, there were 628 applications pending for new water licenses solely for the purposes of power generation, representing more than 750 potential points of river diversion. Topic. Concerns Diverting large amounts of river water reduces river flows, affecting water velocity and depth, reducing habitat quality for fish and aquatic organisms. Reduced flows can lead to excessively warm water for salmon and other fish in summer. In undeveloped areas, new access roads and transmission lines can cause habitat fragmentation, allowing the introduction of invasive species. The lack of reservoir storage may result in intermittent operation, reducing the project's viability. <laughs> Major examples Belo Monte Dam, 11,233 MW, 15,064,000 horsepower, Para, Brazil Chief Joseph Dam, 2,620 MW, 3,510,000 horsepower Boharnois Hydroelectric Power Station, 1,903 MW, 2,552,000 horsepower Bonneville Dam, 1,092 MW 1,464,000 horsepower Satluj Jal Vidyut Nigam Limited, Satluj River, Shimla, India, 1,500 MW 2 million horsepower Ghazi Barutha Hydropower Project on River Indus in Pakistan, 1,450 MW 1,940,000 horsepower Le Grande 1 generating station 1436 megawatts 1,926,000 horsepower Kohala hydropower project Jhelum River Muzaffarabad Pakistan 1100 megawatts 1,500,000 horsepower 
Neelam Jalam Hydropower Plant, Jalam River, Muzaffarabad, Azad Kashmir, Pakistan, 969 MW 1,299,000 horsepower. Baglihar Hydroelectric Power Project in Chenab River in India, 900 MW 1,200,000 horsepower. Carillon Generating Station, Quebec, Canada, 752 MW 1,008,000 horsepower. Upper Tamakoshi Project, Nepal, 456 MW. Niagak Hydroelectric Power Station on Niagak River in Zombo District, Uganda, 3.5 MW 4,700 horsepower. East Toba, Montrose Hydro Project, British Columbia, Canada, 196 MW 263,000 horsepower. Forest Kerr Hydro Project, British Columbia, Canada, 195 megawatts, 261,000 horsepower. Petrind Hydropower Plant, Kunher River, Pakistan, 150 megawatts, 200,000 horsepower. Upper Toba Valley, British Columbia, Canada, 123 megawatts, 165,000 horsepower. Upper Kotmail Hydropower Project, UKHP, Talawakele, Sri Lanka, 150 megawatts, 200,000 horsepower. Kukule Ganga Power Station, KGPS, Kelinkonda, Sri Lanka, 75 megawatts, 101,000 horsepower. Seashelt Creek Generating Station, British Columbia, Canada, 16 megawatts, 21,000 horsepower. Topic. See also Environmental concerns with electricity generation Environmental impacts of reservoirs Hydropower Small hydro Micro hydro Pico hydro Gravitation water vortex power plant Notes